Some people might not think that working a retail job is very demanding. But let me tell you, people out in the wild are absolutely crazy. The number of irate customers demanding that I honor their expired coupons or berating me for the company's decision to start charging for plastic bags that I encounter on a daily basis is astounding. Like I have any control over the coupon or bag pricing policy at Walmart. Since I'm one of the managers, I end up fielding a lot of these complaints, which sucks, but it also means I've been with the store long enough that I have a set Monday to Friday schedule, which is a pretty good trade-off. But anyways, Fridays are when I start the unwinding process, and that usually means putting on a great outfit and heading out to my favorite bar with my friends. Friday nights are what I live for. The work week is done and I have two wonderful days of no responsibilities to look forward to. The best and only way, in my opinion, to start an awesome weekend is to go out and enjoy the night. I usually take an Uber. No DUIs for me, thank you very much. I meet everyone at the bar since I live on the other side of town from most of my friends. This Friday was no different. I hopped into my Uber as soon as it pulled up in front of my house and I was off. What a night. I won't bore you with all the drunken details, but I had a great time. The bartender announced last call, and I reached for my phone for the first time since I arrived at the bar. My heart dropped as I realized I couldn't find my phone. My entire life is on that thing. I quickly asked Shannon if I could use her phone to sign in to try to track my phone, hoping that it would show up in the bar and we could start calling it. Or if someone took it, they would still be close by and we could find them and demand my phone back. To my surprise, my phone was at my house. I laughed in relief. In my excitement to start the night, I must have left it behind. It was odd though. I never leave home without it, and I could have sworn I texted my mom from the Uber here, but I must have been confused since I had had a few drinks tonight. Shannon ordered me an Uber and I said my goodbyes. The Uber pulled up to my house at around 2 a.m. and I stumbled my way inside. I was too tired to really look for my phone, and to tell the truth, I didn't want to spend too much time wandering around my house alone in the middle of the night. Something felt a little bit off about the place, maybe a new smell or something, but that was a problem for tomorrow morning. I couldn't find my phone anywhere in my house. I tore the place apart looking for it and came up with nothing. I decided to use my laptop to use the tracking app again. I thought maybe it would be accurate enough that I could at least see what side of the house the phone was in, but I doubted that would be possible. I zoomed in on the house as the app was loading, and to my dismay, the phone didn't come up at all. It must have died overnight. I was pretty disappointed, but at least I knew the phone was somewhere in the house. Not wanting to waste my entire weekend looking for it, I went about my business, using my laptop to stay in touch with my friends. Monday rolled around and the phone was still missing. I decided to stop looking for it, hoping that I would see it out of the corner of my eye when I wasn't so completely focused on it. I took my laptop to work so I could chat with some friends on my breaks and not feel completely disconnected from the world. I pulled my laptop out on my lunch break and ended up fielding a lot of questions about why I was setting up an office space in the lunchroom. One of my friends at work was interested in the phone tracking app I mentioned as I relayed the saga of my lost phone, so I opened it up to show her. The map was still zoomed in on my house, and to my surprise, the phone was showing up right in the middle of the house. My friend and I were discussing how this could be possible. Maybe it woke itself up. Maybe I hadn't waited long enough for the map to load last time, when the phone started moving towards the front of the little box that represented my house on the map. We watched as the phone moved back and forth across the length of my house, my skin crawling as I tried not to imagine something or someone moving my phone around in my supposedly empty house. I felt the blood drain from my face as I realized I was going to have to go home alone at the end of my shift. My friend must have noticed I was terrified by what I was seeing, as she quickly told me I was being ridiculous. Apparently these tracking apps aren't that accurate, and plenty of things could be causing this apparent back and forth motion of the little blue dot representing my phone. As she was calming me down, the phone stopped moving on the screen, resting in the middle of my house once again. I kept the app open for the rest of my lunch break, and the dot was perfectly still. I couldn't quite shake my unease, but I told myself over and over again that I'd go home, find my phone first thing, and this weirdness would be all over. I went straight home after my shift, punching in the code for my electronic front door lock with a few mistakes and some hesitation. Had I deleted the door pin from the notes on my phone? I had a really hard time remembering passwords, which is why I didn't have one on my phone itself but it was probably a bad idea to store the code to my front door on my phone. 
I decided the first thing I would do when I found my phone would be to delete the code for my house from my notes and add a password to the phone, even if it's something simple like 1234. I stepped through my front door and smelled that odd smell from Friday night again. It reminded me of an aftershave my uncle used to wear. The unease I felt in the lunchroom washed over me again. I didn't have any kind of perfume or aftershave in the house. The scents tended to give me a headache if I wore them all day. Before I started to look for my phone, I took a look at the tracking app on my laptop, just for interest's sake. The little blue dot was nowhere to be seen around my house. Maybe the phone had really died this time. I tried refreshing the page and the map reset to show a wider area of the city. There was the little blue dot, flashing over a building in the middle of town. I took a closer look and realized it was at my store. I slammed the laptop shot and was instantly sick to my stomach. There was no way I brought my phone to work, was there? No, it had been at the house when I was at work. What about that movement I saw in the lunchroom? Could this be another weird, inaccurate location reading that just happened to land on top of the Walmart I worked at? I didn't have any other explanation for what was going on, and I was starting to feel extremely ill. I made my way upstairs to my bedroom with plans to go to bed immediately. I paused in the doorway when I noticed my unmade bed. I didn't always make my bed before work, but I really thought I had done it today. My unease and nausea had increased to what I thought was probably a full-blown panic attack. I was about a second away from running out my front door, but instead I sank to the floor to try to catch my breath before making a rash decision. I took a few deep breaths to center myself. There was a good chance I hadn't made my bed this morning. I had left earlier than usual to get a fancy coffee at Starbucks as a little pick-me-up on my way to work. That thought calmed me down a bit and I decided to just sleep this off. I did send an email out to the other Walmart managers asking if someone could cover my shift the next day. I had a feeling that I wasn't going to feel very refreshed in the morning. Jess answered back right away saying that they'd take the shift, so I got into bed without setting an alarm on my laptop. The next morning, I woke up just as groggy as I thought I would. My dreams were not happy ones, and though I couldn't remember them in detail, I knew a considerable amount of my night included me opening various doors in my house, expecting someone to jump out at me with each door swing. I made my way downstairs, resolving to use my day off to buy a new phone and just move on from the old one that was causing me so much anxiety. I would also delete the tracking app from my laptop since it was obviously not working at all. I walked downstairs and turned the corner to my kitchen when I locked eyes with a middle-aged man in a flannel shirt eating cereal at my kitchen table. I almost dropped to the floor, I was so shocked by what I saw. I could barely breathe as the man dropped his spoon in surprise glaring at me from across the room. You're supposed to be at work today, he said, as if there was nothing else odd about this morning meeting in my kitchen. What do you mean I'm supposed to be at work? Who are you and what are you doing here? I managed to say, though my voice was much more hoarse than usual. He was making his way across the kitchen towards me, with a half smirk on his face that I did not like the look of at all. I tried to will some kind of energy into my body, hoping for one of those rushes of adrenaline people talk about happening in life or death situations. Because that is what it was, I could tell by the look in this man's eyes that I needed to get away from him immediately. I turned numbly towards the front door, hoping I could make it outside, or at least close enough that a scream might be heard through the thin wood of the door. I gained speed as I got closer to the door, my body finally recovering from the shock of my unexpected house guest, but I could hear him getting closer to me his footsteps pounding on the hardwood behind me as he realized I might make it out in time. I was two feet from the door when he collided with me, bringing me down hard onto the ground. At the same time that my body crashed into the floor, there was a frantic pounding at my front door. I could hear a voice screaming through the door, Alex, what's happening? Are you okay? And then more pounding. My house guest scrambled off of me and sprinted for the back door. I crawled towards the front and managed to get the door open, letting Amy, one of the Walmart managers, in before I fainted. I awoke to paramedics taking my vitals as I lay on the couch in my living room. I could see out of the corner of my eye police crawling over every inch of my kitchen, some with cameras, other with those evidence markers you see in TV shows. Over the next few weeks, the police were able to cobble together some of the story of what happened to me over those two days. The Uber I had taken to the bar on Friday night had been driven by a man named Mark Reddington, who appeared identical to what I could remember of my house guest when I was shown his picture. As far as the police can gather, I must have left my phone in the back of Mark's car. 
He then used the info on it to sneak into my house when I was at the bar and at work on Monday. Who knows how long he was there and what he did in my house during that time. On Monday evening, when I finished my shift, he showed up at Walmart to apply for a job. On Tuesday, he let himself back into my house, assuming I would be at work as scheduled. Amy had stopped by to check on me after getting my email the night before. And that's where the story ends. Mark ran out my back door and into the abyss. The police haven't been able to track him down and can't tell me if he's left town, left the country, or could be hiding down the street. I don't know what his plan was. If he was just going to live in my house indefinitely while I was at work, getting a job at Walmart to keep better track of my schedule once I transferred my life to a new phone, or if he had more sinister plans. I remember the look in his eyes as he saw me in the kitchen and the crash into the floor as I tried to run away. And I have to believe that eventually living in the house without me was going to get old. For now, I have to decide what to do with my life. Do I stay in this house, change the locks and move on? Do I look for a new job or live in fear of him showing up while I'm working? First things first, before I make any life-changing decisions, I'm going to put a password on my phone. Thank you for listening to Mrs. Nightmare. I hope you enjoyed this story, and if you did, please consider subscribing for more. Thank you. <laughs>